These days, she's the chair of the ABC, but Ita Buttrose became a household name as the editor of the Australian Women's Weekly, covering numerous royal tours and meeting the Queen in person, and she joins us now. Ita, most of us woke up to this news this morning. What went through your mind when you heard? I was sad, actually. I was sad that she'd gone. I, uh, you know, we, I think we all saw her meeting the new British Prime Minister, Prime Minister Truss, and I didn't, I didn't expect her to leave so rapidly. So I think, in a way, it was a shock, even though we were sort of prepared for it. But, you know, reflecting back, she's been a part of our lives for such a long period of time. And I was there in 1954 as schoolgirl when, when, she, when she came on the first visit to Australia. And I, mean, I, knew, I do remember that I thought it was great that we got a half day off school. But, I mean, <laughs> obviously we were there to wave flags at the Queen, which we did. We were all waving but, flags. You know, one of the things I don't understand because I wasn't there is why, were, why was there such appetite? What had, what had created that huge appetite? Well, I think this, the Women's Weekly had. I mean, so Frank Packer created the Women's Weekly during the recession. He was, he, he was the owner of the magazine. And he knew the Queen's worth as a cover girl and and she she proved herself many times over the years as a cover girl on the weekly she sold more copies of magazines than princess diana did in her heyday yeah. but but so we were prepared for it and the, the princess's um, nanny crawfy had committed the unforgivable sin of producing a book about the two princesses which she which which you're not meant to do mm. and they never spoke to her again so we, we were fed a diet of the Queen. The palace supplied photographs, and Australians lapped it up. And what about? Sorry, well, I was just going to say, what about the? Um, what about that period of time? What did she represent? Because it wasn't that long after the war, after austerity. Yeah. What did the young bride mean as a figure coming to Australia? I, I'm not sure we knew what it meant. As, as a child, I don't. As a schoolgirl, I yeah. don't think I did. But I think we were very small. Really, we we're only about nine million of us then. With quite a small population for a country our size. And here was this very pretty young woman coming to our shores with a handsome prince. And it was a bit like a fairy tale. And and we were very we were very British back then. I mean we mm. our food was British, our customs were very British. You know, there was a, there was a lot of British in all of us and and I think we just we respected her and that respect grew and grew as we saw her carry out her duties unwavering in her mm. dedication she was she was amazing and just the fact that she did manage to meet the new british prime minister and then and then go home and die that's mm. what it seems like you just think what spirit what resilience she had that service until the end and i'm keen a little later on to get some of your thoughts of your own personal interactions with the queen over the years but the other big part of today ida of course has been we have a new king immediately, King yeah. Charles III. How does that sound? They don't muck around, do they? I mean, <laughs> you know, one one is dead, and uh, and God saves the king. The, the king is there, which was exactly what happened when when the Queen's father died, which I do remember. And it was the same thing. The king is dead. Long live the queen. And there was the beginning of the second Elizabethan era, and 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 that's the system you know that is the system and she knew that that's why she was determined to finish her duty as the queen she didn't abdicate as many people thought she might mm. and now it's charles's turn and at 73 is the oldest person to assume the crown in 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 britain and you think it will take a bit of time to get used to that concept of king charles and the charles era Probably. I mean, he's been heir to the throne since he was three years old, so he's been in training for a long time. So I think he'd probably be very au okay with the duties of the king. But he doesn't have... He has his own presence, but whether he has the presence of the queen, I don't think he does. She was a very special human being, and I think that's why we respected her, and that's why we've, we've honoured her. As, as the Queen during all these years when there's been a lot of talk in Australia about becoming a republic, but nobody wanted to entertain that while the Queen was still alive. And how did she manage to maintain that position? You know, after that great hope of the young woman's visit, how did she manage to hold our attention and our affections for so long? Well, I think she was a very genuine human being, quite frankly. I think she was a very nice human being. Mm. She was kind. 
She she had a connection. She connected with people. If you look at her on her 1970s, 1970s walkabout, which was the first time she went out into the crowds and met people here in Australia, she loved it, and they loved her. You know, the, the rapport was instant, mm. and they never went back to the way that it was. She was quite smart. There was a lot said over the years that Diana was very cluey about the media, but I think the Queen was much sharper than anyone thought. She knew when it was time to do a walkabout. She knew when it was time to invite people in to see, the, see them all having a picnic in the Buckingham Palace grounds and a barbecue, because Prince Philip fancied himself as a barbecue cook. And she, and she was very smart at, at, at working out what needed to be done. Mm. I want to come back to, a little later, uh, those issues around the death of Diana and, and your own uh, experience, mm. as I say, having lunch with the Queen. But for now, Ida Buttrose, thank you. Thank you.